muscles. We have 600 of them. They make up uh, between one third and uh, one and half of our body weight. And along with connective tissue, they bind us together, they hold us up, and they help us move. And whether or not, and whether or not bodybuilding is your hobby, muscles need your constant, constant at, uh, uh, attention because the way you treat them on a daily basis determines whether they will wither or grow. Say you're standing in front of a door, ready to pull it open. Your brain and muscles are perfectly poised to help you achieve this goal. First, your brain sends a signal to the motor neurons inside your arm and when they receive this message, they fire, causing muscles to contract and relax, which uh, pull on the bones in your arm and generate the needed movement. The bigger the challenge becomes, the bigger the brain signal grows and the more motor units it rallies to help you achieve your task. But what if the door is made of solid iron? Well, at this point, your arm muscles alone won't be able to generate enough tension to pull it open. So your brain appeals to other muscles for help. You, you plant your feet and you tighten your belly and you tense your back, generating enough force to just yank it open. Your nervous system has just leveraged the resource you already have, which is other muscles, to meet the demand. While all this is happening, your muscle fibers undergo an, another uh, cellular uh, change. As you expose them to stress, they experience microscopic damage, uh, which in, in this con context is actually a good thing. In response, the injured cells release inflammatory molecules uh, that activate the immune system to repair the injury. This is when the muscle building magic happens. The greater the damage to the muscle tissue, the more your body will need to repair itself. The resulting cycle of damage and repair eventually makes muscles bigger and stronger and as they adapt to progressively greater demands. Since our bodies have already um, ad adapted to the most everyday activities, those generally don't produce enough stress to stimulate new muscle growth. So to build new muscle, a process called hypertrophy, our uh, cells need to be exposed to higher workloads than they are used to. In fact, if you don't continuously expose your muscles to some resistance, they actually shrink, a process known as muscular atrophy. In, con in contrast, uh, contrast, exposing uh, them to a high degree of tension, especially while the muscle is le lengthening, or also called as eccentric contraction, generates effective conditions for new growth. However, Muscles rely on more than just activity to grow. Without proper nutrition, hormones and rest, your body, your, your body would uh, never be able to br repair those damaged muscular fibers. Protein in our diet preserves muscle mass by providing the building blocks for new tissue in the form of am amino acids and adequate protein intake along with naturally occurring hormones like insulin, uh, like growth factor, uh, help shift the body into a state where the tissue is repaired and grown. This vital repair process mainly uh, occurs when we are resting, especially at night while, s while sleeping. Gender and age affect this repair mechanism. Genetic factors are also do play a role in one's ability to grow muscle. Some people have more robust immune reactions to muscle damage and are better able to repair them, uh, while some are maybe slow at it. The body responds to the demands you place on it anyway. So if you uh, tear your muscles up, eat right, and rest and repeat, you will create the conditions to make your muscles as big and as strong as possible. It is with muscles as it is with life. Meaningful growth requires a lot of challenge and a lot of stress.